Okay, welcome friends to our YouTube channel where we are presenting mathematics lessons. So in this uh, uh, lesson, which is lesson number two, we continue dealing with approximation. Alright, but to be specific, we deal with three things. Absolute error, relative error, and percentage error. Okay. Alright. That's what we are going to, to deal with. Alright. So now, what is an absolute error? We are saying absolute error is found in two ways. Or by definition, we are saying this is an absolute difference between the true value and the recorded value. Or we can say absolute error is equal to the absolute value of recorded value minus true value. Right? Even if we were to interchange them, say true value minus recorded value, the answer will still be the same. Or alternatively, we can say absolute error is half times the least unit of measurement. Now, this is used when there is only one dimension given. This is used when you have got a recorded and a true value, right? How you're supposed to get the least unit of measurement of a dimension was covered uh, in lesson E1. So I would encourage you to go to lesson one on how to identify the least unit of measurement of a dimension, okay? Now, when you look at relative error, we are saying relative error is equal to absolute error over the true value. Absolute error over true value. Then when you have found the relative error, it means you can now find the percentage error because percentage error is relative error times 100%. So we're saying percentage error is relative error times 100%. Or, since relative error is this, absolute error over true value, meaning therefore that percentage error is equal to absolute error over true value by 100%. Okay, now let's look at an example so that we see how we can tackle these terms. Now we are saying the true value of a length of a rectangle is 25. If it is recorded as 25.1 centimeter, find the absolute error. Now, we want to find the absolute error, but we are saying to find the absolute error, we can either use this or that. But in this case, which approach are we going to use? Look, we have a true value given here true value, all right, and the recorded value. So two things, recorded and true value, meaning that we are going to use the first approach, which is true value, all right, in this case is 25 centimeters, and recorded value is 25.1 centimeters, take note. Therefore means that absolute error is equal to the absolute value of, what is our recorded value? Our recorded value is 25.1, which is this one, all right, then our true value is what? 25 centimeters. So you subtract here. You are going to say 25.1 minus 0, 0 point, uh, minus 25 flat. Eh? All right. Minus 25.0. I think this is a point 0.1. So you have got 0, 0, point 0.1. All right. This is what we have, which is a, a point what? 0.1. Okay, so our absolute error, error is equal to 0 0.1 centimeter. All right, why have we used this approach? Because we have the recorded value and the true value. Okay, then we okay, sorry for that. Uh, we proceed. Mm. So now we go to to, to B. So here we want to find the relative error. Alright? So we want to find the relative error. So now, we we'll come back here. We are saying, what is our, uh, our relative error? Absolute error over true value. Alright? So now, we we'll say, okay, what is our absolute error? Our absolute error is a 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 over what is the true value? The true value is what? When you check here, the true value is 25. So you have got it, 25 centimeters. But of course, this is a ratio, so the, the, the units will cancel. Now, you should always try by all means to simplify your answer, especially when there's a decimal point. You can get rid of a decimal point, all right? Now, how do you get rid of a decimal point? You look at the number of decimal places. There's one decimal place. So you multiply by what? 10. Multiply by 10, all right? 0 0.1 by 10 is a 1 over. 25 by 10, you get 250. 
So this is our absolute uh, our relative error. I hope it's okay, friends. Okay, good. Then C. C, we want to find the percentage error. Percentage error. Uh, we'll come back to our formula. What is percentage error? We are saying percentage error is relative error times 100%. Or you can repeat this, then you multiply by 100%. Okay? Now, the question is, do we have our relative error? Yes, we have. Okay? And what is our relative error? Um, it's 1 over 250. 1 divided by 250 times 100%. You've seen that? Good. So now we can divide the simple division. So maybe we can say 0 divide into that 0. So we have got G 10 over... 25%. Alright? So you can find the number, the highest common factor of these two, which in this case is um, a 5, right? 5 here, you have got a 2. 5 there, you have got a 5%. So you have 2 over 5%. Or if you want, you can divide this as you can say 5 into 2 is 0. Point, you add a 0. 5 into that it is 4. So 0.4%. That is the, the percentage error. In, the, in terms of error that you are going to make, what is that error in terms of its percentage? So in, in terms of its percentage, the error that can be accepted is the 0.4%. So you can see that the error isn't much. Meaning that when you go outside that, then um, something else. So our percentage error or the percentage error in this case, all right, is a 0.4%. I hope that uh, is clear. Okay, so I can erase. Go to question two. Go to question in two. I hope I'm trying my best to simplify these things for you. Good. Number two. Find the absolute error. Relative error and percentage error of who? So, the dimension here, the dimension given is 18.0 meters. Don't just say 18 because I've given you a zero deliberate. All right? Now, how do we get the absolute error? Now, you need to know that before you deal with the relative error or percentage error, you must know how to compute the what? The absolute error. All right? So in this case, what, uh, what are we saying? What we're saying is, how do we compute the absolute error here? There are two approaches. The coded value minus true value. Or half times distance of measurement. So which of these approaches are we going to use? Of course, we're going to use this one because we do not have the recorded and the true value. So this means that our absolute error, error is equal to half times Least unit of measurement. Alright? Now, what is our least unit of measurement? We said for any whole number, if you only have 18, the least unit of measurement is a, a 1. If you have 18.0, the least unit of measurement is a 0 0.1. What? 1. It keeps on. If you have got maybe 18.25, the least unit of measurement will be 0 0.01. Are we together? Okay. So, so, in this case, we'll say this is equal to half times. What is the least unit of measurement of 18.0? There's one decimal place, which is 0. So, it's going to be 0 0.1. And this will give us what? When, what is half of 0 0.1? Half of 0 0.1 is a 0 0.05. Take note. Okay? So, this is the absolute error. You use the absolute error to find the upper limit and the lower limit. Now, there's something I want to explain. Meaning that if I have a whole number 18 alone, just 18, look. If you have 18, its least unit of measurement uh, is going to be 1, isn't it? So, the absolute error here for a whole number will be half times 1, which is a 0 0.5. So, 
If you have a whole number without a decimal point, the absolute error is a 0 0.5. Whether it's 100 or 1, as long as there's no decimal point, the absolute error there is a 0 0.5. But if I have 18.0, what have we found? We have found that the absolute error is a 0 0.05. So the zeros will keep on accumulating. You've seen that? Because I've got one decimal place, there will be one zero. There is no decimal place, there is no zero. If you have got 18. 0.12 Right? How many decimal places? 2. So my absolute error will be 0 0.005 Are you getting that? If you have got maybe 20.134 How many decimal places? 3. So 3 zeros. 0 0.0005 That would be your absolute error. So in this case for 18.5 Our absolute error is supposed to be 0 0.05 I hope I've made myself clear there. Okay. So, so for the first one we've attempted, we've answered. Alright? Then we go to relative. Relative error. Okay. What is our relative error? We are saying it is the uh, absolute error over two value. What is our absolute error? Our absolute error is a, uh, a 0 0.05 over. What is our true value? Our true value is the, the actual dimension given, 18.0. Now, for the sake of calculation, 18.0 will be regarded as 18. So, you have got 0 0.05 divided by what? 18 for the sake of our calculations. So, now we are going to say, how many decimal places do we have here? There are, there are two, so you multiply by 100. 100 and the 100 key. So that, why I've got a video here so that you don't get mixed up, you don't get confused, all right? So, 0 0.05 by 100, you get a 5 on top. Over, all right? Uh, over, then you're going to multiply 18 by 100. So you have got here, 18. Zero, zero. Okay? So now, you can find the highest common factor there. If at all, you can divide the um, 5 into 18, and so on and so forth. Okay, so, are we able to find the highest common factor? Okay, so maybe we can say 5 into 5, 1. Then 5 into... 18, how many times? You see, 3, and then the 3. So you have got 30. So 5 into 30 is 6. Into 0 is 0. So you have got 1 over 368. That one is our, our relative error. Okay, I hope that is okay. That is our relative error. So I can get the percentage error. Let me raise on top. So, to get a percentage error, error, and then we we'll refer to this here. So, I say percentage error is equal to relative error by 100%. So, in this case, what is our relative error? 1 over 360. So, we are going to say 1 over 360 times 100%. Right? Then here you can divide. Maybe of course the zeros can need can you divide. Then you look at 10 and D at 6. Alright? If at all you are able to find the highest common factor. And in this case, maybe we can go for, for 2. So you have got 2 here being equal to 5. Uh here being equal to what? 18. Alright? So we have 5 over 18 percent. Okay, so so for this dimension, the acceptable error in terms of percentage is 5 over 18 percent. Of course, you can divide this, but even this is very much okay. It's fine. You can end there as a, as a fraction, as long as it is a, a proper fraction. Okay, so that is our 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 percentage error. So first, 
Now, sometimes the question will just ask you to say get a uh, percentage error. What does it mean? Indirect, they're asking you to get the absolute error and the relative error. Okay, so that is the, that for question, uh, question two. Let's look at the last question. Question three. So we have a dimension given 15.4. Plus or minus 0 0.05. Now, the measurement that is given here in terms of plus or minus this is the absolute error of this. Remember, we said for a whole number, you don't have you have a 0 0.35 as the absolute error. If there is one decimal place, there will be 0 0.05 as your absolute error, which is this. Alright? So this uh, measurement has got an absolute error of 0 0.05. Okay, good. Now, if that's the case, find the one tolerance. Remember what we said in lesson one. We said when you are dealing with tolerance, we are saying highest value minus lowest value. Right? Now, how do we get this? How do we get the the highest value and the, the lowest value? By highest value, here we mean you get the upper limit. Lowest value here, you get the lower limit. I hope it's that, that is okay, friends. So first you get the upper limit, followed by the lower limit. Okay, so we are going to say a tolerance is equal to, what is our upper limit? We are going to say this plus that. So we are going to say, 15.4 plus 0 0.05 minus, this minus is from here. What is our lower limit? The same value minus this. That's what we say. So we have what here? 15.4 minus 0 0.05. Alright? So, what you can do here, you can say, you can add here. Uh, 15.4 plus 0 0.05. That's a 15.45. Huh? Let, me, let me just do it here. 0, 0. Uh, 0, 0.05. You can put a 0 here. So you've got 5, 4 point. This, this is what you have. So here we have um, 15.45 minus. Alright? So when you, you less... 0 0.05 from this one, you have got 15.35. But again, I can demonstrate it because these are paper one questions. So we have got 0, 0. Point, um, 0, 0.05. There will be 3, 1, 5, 3. Uh, point, but it is this what we have. Alright? 15.35. And when you subtract that, when you subtract that, what do you get? You get, uh, so you have 15.45 minus 15.35. You have 0, 1 point. Uh, zero, uh, here, 0, 0, which is a point what? 1. So this is what we, we have here as our tolerance, 0 0.1 uh, kgs. Uh, so, this is our tolerance. Remember what he said? That um, tolerance is as good as the least unit of measurement. Okay. So, I think for this presentation, this is where we end. Unless there are challenges, you can maybe comment. But I've got uh, an exercise here, which I'll give you. Okay, via the camera. So again, maybe you can check here for, for the tolerance. You just look at the distance of measurement. The distance of measurement of this one is a point one. That's why the tolerance is a point. Okay, thanks so much.